this and how you can possibly benefit from this. So, uh, as I have uh, stressed, uh, while we partner uh, with the Internet Society, uh, all the work that we are doing uh, on GIP Digital Watch, which is a repository of various resources on Internet governance issues, uh, dynamic updates, uh, invo uh, information about the actors involved in each issues, about the instruments, policy instruments included in all these issues. This is a strictly uh, neutral product, meaning that ISOC does not interfere uh, with, the, with the content uh, that the Diplo Foundation and its team of curators are, are putting this. The main objective for us is really to create an independent resource that should serve as a one-stop shop, mainly for diplomats and other target groups. We try to do it in an integrated way. There is not only the online observatory, but also other products that try to complement uh, complement this work. Uh, at, this, uh, at this slide, you can see what are the four main elements or the building blocks uh, of the of the work that we are doing. So first of all, online, uh, we have uh, the GIP uh, Digital Watch, uh, which you can access free of charge. You can, uh, you, can, you can use it as your professional or private interests uh, uh, want you to. If you want also, uh, in every last Tuesday uh, of the month, you can join us at the same time, always at one o'clock CET, for a 60-minute briefing on internet governance. In these 60 minutes, either online or in situ in Geneva, where the Geneva Internet Platform is based, you can get a very concise summary of everything that has mattered in internet governance in the previous month and giving you an update for the month ahead. So uh, because our work, Diplo Foundation as such, mainly works with diplomats, diplomats are very busy people and diplomats in Geneva face even more challenges because they often cover a you know, wide range of issues with internal governance being only one of them. It's really important that you know, they can get this service and really get up to date and be sure they do not miss uh, the major developments. We also try to play around a bit uh, with trends in internet governance debate. That is why uh, we are also bringing in some more funny elements, something that we call the IG barometer, which looks at some of the major internet governance issues and tries to see whether the particular issue in the, in the current debate has gone up or down or the debate remained at a stable level. Uh, this is something that you can also, uh, also uh, get uh, on the GIP website and, and get more information about, about how we see the trends. And in, in addition to this, every month we also publish online and in a printed version, the so-called Geneva Internet Platform Digital Watch newsletter, which is also available here at the front, uh, at the front desk. And this newsletter, again, gives you the summary in a printed format with a lot of further additional links that you can refer to and navigate better through uh, the internet governance developments. This is a screenshot of what the G GIP Digital Watch online resource looks like. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the website is divided into uh, issues. Uh, we cover 42 internet governance issues based on Diplo Foundation's taxonomy. Uh, it lists all relevant events for internet governance. It lists the actors, all internet governance actors. Instruments, wide range of instruments, starting really from reports to, uh, to treaties. And what is, what is really important is that while you browse through a specific issue, let's say you are interested in, uh, in legal issues, so uh, you go to the legal, uh, legal basket, here we go, and there you have uh, under the basket, under the, let's say, wider group of issues that you're interested, you can, you can even go deeper and deeper. This is what a particular issue page would look like. I have put here the example of multilingualism. So what you get there is at the upper part, you get dynamic updates. Here you have at least once a week an update, what has happened in this particular issue area. You get a description about the issue that can serve you as a very useful uh, background, uh, background material. You can also uh, print this in a very uh, printer-friendly format uh, of a so-called primer that you, you can take away with you. Okay, this is the overview of what multilingualism is and what are the relevant uh, updates in the recent time, what, who are the actors involved, and, and what, uh, what are the instruments that are relevant for this particular topic. 
Here we have an example of the actor page for, for, for the International uh, Telecommunication Union. It looks like this. Again, for, uh, for an actor like the ITU, you would at one place have an overview of all the issues that are relevant for, uh, for its work, all the events in which the ITU in this example would be involved in one way or another. So uh, why are we, are we actually uh, actually doing this? And uh, isn't it you know, contradictory to, uh, to other initiatives uh, being, uh, being out there? So um, an eye opener for us has been in our work with diplomats when let's say a new diplomat, I will not name who it was <laughs> from one country, came to us, to Geneva Internet Platform, to get some kind of you know, up, uh, information, just basic uh, idea where to start following the issues of digital politics and internet governance. She was res responsible for cybersecurity and she asked us, where is the one place where I can get all I need to know to get started? Where is the one place where I can get a basic overview for what matters for me as a diplomat? What are the treaties I should actually, I should actually study? What are the other instruments that are relevant? And how do I make sure I don't miss an important event relevant, relevant for this topic? So this is what we were actually trying to do. We were trying to help, uh, help her and, uh, and many others to, uh, to have their job easier, to create this one-stop shop on internet governance and, and other issues. What is very important when we talk about interoperability but also complementarity uh, to other observatory initiatives is that we believe uh, the work or, or the the needs of different communities really differ. So if you're a diplomat in Geneva, you would have a different way of approaching this than let's say a Google, uh, Google uh, person or, uh, or a civil society activist. Now a few words about how we do it. So luckily we did not have to start from the scratch. Uh, Diplo Foundation has a, lot, uh, has a lot to build on, a lot of resources uh, that, we have, uh, that we had available um, at, uh, at, different, at different places and it was, it was a way to put this together uh, and uh, available for, for the community. The content we have on Digital Watch is curated. This is a very important element because uh, it's not just machine uh, searchable information. Everything that gets on GIP Digital Watch goes through a human, uh, human element uh, in this. Uh, the updates are done uh, by, element, uh, by, by, by our uh, curators. Uh, the selection of events, the selection of actors, the selection of instruments, this is all very, uh, very carefully uh, taken, uh, taken Taken care of. We also try to experiment with both qualitative and quantitative type of work. So we do have in-house a cognitive scientist you know, that helps us uh, bringing some more uh, visual um, add-ons uh, to the work with a lot of infographics and, and uh, very, uh, very interesting uh, features. The layers of the work uh, for the GIP Digital Watch uh, is, is quite complicated. So uh, the sources are of a different nature. We go to official documents, academic uh, resources, media, which is very important for our data mining exercises, uh, social media, events. Uh, for instance, uh, for an event like the IGF, for our work for GIP Digital Watch, we are actually doing comprehensive reporting uh, from here, and that all feeds into the digital watch, again, done by humans in a, in a curated and contextual, uh, contextualized uh, way. So uh, what you see at the presentation layer has a much, uh, much deeper uh, roots and sources. Again, one of the f famous diplo illustrations is to always try to take into account that there is a context uh, to everything uh, that we are, we are doing. And, and this is, this is uh, what, what we always have at, at our hearts. Now, this is a new thing, as I said at the beginning, we are now in the second, uh, second month, and there is a lot more to be done, and we do have a lot of plans. What is important for us is also to listen to the needs of the community as such, so feel free to get in touch with us any, any time uh, to, to tell us what you would find uh, useful. Uh, we work uh, very closely uh, with other initiatives, including, let's say, JIPO and others. Why? Because we really think there is an added value of working together uh, rather than each going uh, its own track and then uh, the community actually being, uh, being confused uh, which source to refer to. 
uh, we are launching uh, today um, uh, another layer of the cooperation uh, with ISOC in GIP Digital Watch, where we will be launching a call for curators from ISOC uh, chapters and members to help us bring a bit more of the regional focus to GIP Digital Watch, but I believe that Constance will talk about it a bit later. If you are interested in this, I remind you that there are leaflets on the specific call for assistant curators available uh, on, the, on the front desk. Uh, again, for an exercise like this, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, the context, for instance, can be localized. So we may later have GAP Digital Watch, A Digital Watch Asia, GAP Digital Watch Africa. Because, again, the context is the key. What is an issue that is really important uh, in the US might not be that relevant uh, for, uh, for the Asian region. We will be continuing with our research on taxonomy. Uh, and we were experimenting later uh, uh, with multilingual content. One example uh, of uh, our work connected to specific events that I've already briefed, uh, briefed you on a bit earlier is the IGF Daily. So this is an experiment we are undertaking here at the, uh, at the IGF in uh, partnership and with support uh, of, of the Internet Society. So every day you can get online to GIP Digital Watch to have an update about what has happened in some of the major sessions here at the IGF because it is a challenge to, to follow all of them uh, often running in parallel simultaneously. But in the morning of each day starting from today you can get your IGF daily uh, printed summary looking at the, at the day that has, uh, that has passed. So um, that would be it from, uh, from my side. And I would like uh, now to ask Constance uh, to tell us a bit more about why ISOC actually uh, went into this exercise and what are the elements that are important for your work in this. Thank you very much, Teresa, and for the invitation to, to speak. I'm Constance Bonner from the Internet Society. Thank you very much, Teresa, for the invitation to speak. I'm not going to uh, add a lot because I think you've covered it very well. Um, I will just say that the United Society was uh, honored to uh, uh, start this partnership with uh, Diplo Foundation, Geneva Internet Platform, and work more closely with, uh, with Switzerland, of course, at this occasion. Um, I will just say uh, very briefly why uh, we, we decided to enter this partnership and why we think uh, it's, it's important. Um, internet governance issues uh, tend to become overwhelming for people and through our membership we have been told, whether it's organizational members, individuals, academics, um, that individuals find it difficult to understand the issues, to be equipped with the right resources in order to be able to fully participate. If we have multi-stakeholder participation mechanisms, but at the same time, individuals, governmental delegates, don't feel equipped that they uh, have the information, they will not be able to uh, participate adequately. Uh, so this is really uh, the rational why we at the Internet Society decided to initiate this partnership with uh, GIP, Gen Geneva Internet Platform, and, and Diplo. Um, we did a survey in March on internet governance to get a sense of people's priorities, concerns, the hot topics, and also uh, get a sense of what people wanted, uh, what ISOC should do and what ISOC should produce or uh, find a way to produce with others uh, through partnerships. People said they were uh, concerned about security, uh, cybersecurity issues uh, emerging. They were concerned about the pace of internet governance discussions and the difficulty for them to fully understand um, and, uh, and at the same occasion participate fully to those discussions. And then they called ISOC very clearly to support local internet governance discussions. And this is what we do through local IGFs. We support their development at the national uh, and uh, regional level. And they also asked ISOC to uh, accelerate, I would say, in the development of resources. So we put out a series of policy briefs. Uh, ISOC is an advocacy uh, organization. Diplo uh, has a slightly different uh, role. So the way we saw this, we would have, through GIP, 
uh, factual objective information uh, offered to the community and then ISOC and others can uh, tweak that information, uh, come up with their own opinions um, and fully participate uh, in their uh, roles of advocates. We also were sensitive to the fact that people want information that is tailored at the national, regional level. Because if you talk about an issue like net neutrality, the perception, definition, legal framework will be very different whether <coughs> you're in a US context, European context, Asian context. And this is why uh, today we are launching with uh, Geneva Internet Platform the call for curators. Uh, to help us monitor, collect this information, and work with uh, Diplo experts to package it to be a resource shared for all stakeholders of internet governance uh, discussion. So basically, this is why ISOC, um, it was close to ISOC's heart to get this project um, on track, and uh, it's also a wonderful opportunity to work more closely with friends and we hope that uh, many of you will apply or share the information um, on this opportunity to become local curators in your countries to share information, gather, collect, and um, offer it to the, to the broader community. I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Constance, for the, for the kind words. Also on our <coughs> site, I can say it's a, it's a tremendous pleasure to work with you on this initiative. Like it is a pleasure for us to work with Switzerland on the GAP. And with this, I would like uh, Thomas uh, Schneider from the Swiss Federal Office of Communications to say a few words. Thank you and good morning to everybody. My name is Thomas. I work for the Swiss government, as um, Theresa has said. Um, we have been uh, initiating the Geneva Internet Platform uh, a few years ago, uh, and the, basically the catalyst experience for us was the Wicked conference, which was a big ITU conference in 2012, where we ended up at the end with a huge clash between, let's say, uh, many industrialized countries on the one hand and, and, and a lot of G77 countries on the other hand, and we realized that uh, much of the, not that much of the discussion was actually based on, on actual factual knowledge, but of, on, also on ideological uh, aspects, on fears, or on, on half knowledge or rumors. And we felt that since um, Switzerland is the home of a large number of intergovernmental institutions around the UN, um, where a lot of issues related to internet or to internet governance are discussed, Normally in the silos in every of these institutions, we have a number of private uh, institutions as well present in Geneva and uh, a lot of NGOs that also deal with different aspects related to the internet. Um, and we realize that people talk to the people they know in their silos, but not necessarily to others who may have a different view or different experience. And so most, most of us uh, do only have a limited, uh, actually, uh, aspects of, of the whole picture of issues that, that are related to internet governance. And then we discussed in a multi-stakeholder uh, group in, in, in Switzerland what whether we could or should do as, as the host country of, of these institutions. We should do something to provide for neutral, factual information for easy access um, to, 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 to people that have, are struggling in finding out what is going on, where, why are people having these positions or the other positions, what is the history to a discussion and so on and so forth. And uh, we came up with, with this idea of, of a, building a platform that had three pillars. Um, one is uh, briefings and information meetings, physical meetings in Geneva targeted in particular, but not only to ambassadors, to people that work in small missions in particular from developing countries and, and, and uh, that have small missions with little, uh, few, uh, uh, little number of people that are struggling to find out where should they invest their time best, which issues are most important for them, what is going on. So uh, <clears throat> that is one pillar that is uh, uh, where Diplo has already uh, been active for quite some time and has, has a, a, a well-known reputation as, as being very flexible also in, in seeing what the actual needs of uh, uh, these actors are. And then the second part of the idea was to have a, we called it a one-stop shop in the beginning, which was like a fashion word a few years ago, <clears throat> some portal, some tool online where you could 
if even uh, no matter where you are, whether you could get easy access to, to what is going on, who is doing what, who is not doing what, and so on and so forth. And depending on the issues, and it has been said already in a personalized way, what, what is of your interest or what you think is of your interest, that you can easily find access to such information. You find access to other people, you get to know uh, uh, other people, other institutions. <clears throat> So, and that second pillar has actually now developed into, into the GIP Digital Watch, which is the tool that ha you, have, you have seen. And then there's a third pillar, which we haven't implemented yet, but we are about to implement it, which is uh, run and financed uh, by, by Swiss private sector actors, which is a physical, the idea of a physical space, a lab, whatever we will call it, once it's there, in Geneva, where people will be able to meet, physically meet, have an infrastructure, an ICT infrastructure that allows them to also connect with other people from around the world, with, with services there, with a nice room, nice room facilities, so they, they can meet and brainstorm, develop new ideas like a catalyst lab or, or whatever you call it. And this is about to be, uh, we have a concept now, we need to see whether we get enough money from the Swiss private sector to do this, but it looks fine. So these are the three elements of the Geneva Internet Platform, which is uh, run and funded by uh, the Foreign Ministry of Switzerland and by my ministry, which is, we have, we call them departments, is the Department for Energy, Environment, Transport and Communication. And uh, we have uh, three more partners. One is the uh, Polytechnical Institute of Switzerland, uh, Lausanne and, and Zurich, that also contribute to the University of Geneva. And then the three so-called uh, Geneva Centers um, it's now the DCAF, the Center for, for uh, Democratization of or Democratic Control of Armed Forces, which is right, right next door on the other side of the railways. And so this is like the basis and, and uh, Diplo is our operator that operates this. And we're also happy to have uh, other partners like ISOC for, for projects that run on Diplo. And I end here just to say that this is not intent, in, in our view, intended to convey Swiss positions or to lobby for Swiss positions. This was really or is meant as a service, uh, as a host country of a number of institutions to provide for easy access to as factual uh, and transparent information as possible. Thank you. Uh, Thomas, thank you very much. Um, also for introducing the other pillars of the Geneva Internet Platform because the GIP really is not only a GIP Digital Watch. And if you are available on Thursday afternoon, if I'm not wrong, we have another open forum uh, planned specifically for Diplo Foundation and its capacity development activities and, uh, and the Geneva Internet Platform in particular. So feel free uh, to, uh, to attend uh, on Thursday as well uh, to learn a bit more. Um, just one uh, final note on what uh, what Thomas was mentioning as the last point, uh, the need for the transparent, uh, neutral information uh, from the daily work uh, that we are doing. Uh, I can confirm that neither ISOC nor Switzerland has actually ever uh, discussed with us the way we present information. This is, uh, this is an independent uh, work uh, of Diplo. Um, Thank you, thank you then for, for your words, and I would like to uh, get to you uh, here in the room, but also our uh, online participants. So if you would like any clarification, comment, or ask a question, uh, please raise your hand, or our remote uh, moderator, please alert me. Uh, yes, I'm not sure, do we have a microphone, or you actually have to come in front? Yeah, sorry about this. And while you are coming here, if you could please uh, introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Hello. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Dan Arnado from the University of Washington. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, I saw a presentation on uh, the Net Mondial's new internet map yesterday too, um, and it seems like there's a lot of synergy and potential overlaps uh, with what you're doing. So I was just curious uh, if you guys had seen the initiative and uh, what you thought of it, and yeah, whether you thought there was some, uh, I think there, there's some interesting room for collaboration there um, and a lot of similar themes. 
Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your question. Uh, yes, we are aware and follow closely uh, the Net Mondial initiative, like we follow also uh, the other uh, observatory initiatives happening. Actually, even here uh, at the IGF, we have a common workshop uh, called something like intro, uh, Introducing Internet Governance Observatories, where we all would get together about five or six partners uh, doing various observatory projects. And we'll try to take the discussion further uh, on the complementarity and, uh, and uh, cooperation. We do have uh, established discussion channels open already, so we meet uh, regularly in, uh, in, conference, uh, in conference calls and, and try to discuss on uh, both how to uh, really make it easier for the community at the end uh, and how to also make it more interoperable on the technical level. Uh, we also have initial discussions on the taxonomy because for the community it may be helpful if the same taxonomy is used without uh, the various initiatives. So uh, the efforts are there. Uh, again, uh, back to the specific target group that each, um, uh, that each uh, of these initiatives uh, is aimed for. Uh, this is where we see the biggest chance for uh, complementarity rather than, uh, rather than competition. But thank you for these questions because this is very important. Uh, Constance or Thomas, would you like to add anything on this? Yes, uh, thank you. Okay, um, thank you. I think it's uh, very encouraging to see uh, that organizations uh, who have resources, the knowledge, the expertise are responding to the call from uh, stakeholders, a uh, very clear call that they need more resources, they need to feel connected, they need to find uh, information about how to participate to these fundamental discussions. Uh, whether it's WISIS, the evolution of IGF, IANA transition. Uh, the fact that there are various projects uh, being developed at the same time, I think is very good because they're complementary. Um, we see that with um, the ISOC network of chapters and members, we really want to give a bottom-up uh, flavor to the content that will come out of Digital Watch. Uh, that was one of our priorities and a clear call from our community. Um, the fact as well that uh, you already have a lot of content on Digital Watch, uh, whereas some of the other platforms are still in the process of crowdsourcing, um, is also very good because uh, it's already providing information, the information that diplomats, civil society leaders, advocates uh, need. And, um, and there is a working relationship between all of those platforms. Uh, I know there's a constant dialogue between European Commission for JIPO and our colleagues from GIP, um, exchanging ideas, uh, tips on how to do this because it requires a lot of expertise. It truly is um, uh, very difficult actually to simplify information and make sure people rapidly can digest it and feel strong enough equipped to uh, dive into those internet governance international discussions. Thank you. Just very quickly to add to this, um, we're, um, as I said, this, this idea has been, it has actually started in, in, on national level in, in 2011, um, also as part of a strategy of, of visibility of Switzerland in, in, in international discussions and con contributions. And we've been uh, in contact from the very beginning with our colleagues from the European Union with the JIPO idea, which is a similar idea. Uh, and, and, and it's actually, uh, I would also confirm that it's rather fruitful uh, to share ideas. And then it's also good for people to have a choice because someone may like this application better. I mean, it's with other applications as well. Every idea has, has uh, although they are similar, has, has slight differences. and. The Swiss approach to this is we, we try to, and the GIP has been launched in, in uh, spring, uh, January 2014, so it, we're there now for almost two years. We started with the physical courses in Geneva, then slowly built up the content on, on the GIP website with a timeline, with, with a glossary of institutions and so on. We try to do 
not the big thing uh, at once, but we normally, as a Swiss, you try to do uh, start with something small but reliable, something that works, and you try to build on it and make it bigger over time and see whether people like it and, and adapt if, if they don't. So this is how GIP has been developing so far, and we are quite happy with the way it has been developing, and we are looking forward to, to other initiatives to, to, to uh, complement what, what we do because, yeah, as I said, this is only an advantage for people to have a choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Constance and Thomas. Please, if you can please come forward and introduce yourself. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The name is Kevon Swift. I'm from LACNIC, and I'm also an avid internet user. Um, just a quick question, and I apologize beforehand if this seems a bit repetitive, but I just wanted to hear a bit more about the idea of the curators and find out exactly what were the anticipated responsibilities for such curators and also know if they will leverage, let's say, existing structures as informal as they may be. For instance, within the Caribbean region where there have been small IG-related activities going on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin, and it's good to, good to see you. Um, no, this is a very, very important and practical question. I don't know, Constance, if I should say a few words or, or you want to, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, and the leaflet uh, in the front will give you all the details about how to apply and also uh, what the particular profile uh, of this person should be. So uh, just, um, uh, just a few uh, prerequisites uh, that I will now remember from my head. Um, because this is a part of uh, the ISOC elements in GAP Digital Watch, uh, it is conditional that you are a member uh, of the Internet Society or of one of the chapters. Uh, you may, however, if you're not, also become a member or a chapter, a chapter involved uh, person through this application process. You should obviously be interested and knowledgeable about internet, uh, internet governance issues, and you should be following very closely uh, the developments in your in your country in your region because that's exactly what we will be interested in in, mo in most for the for the more localization uh, of the content. Um, you should be flexible. Uh, you would need to commit um, <clears throat> to neutrality and, and biased presentation of the information. This is this is very essential. Um, another important prerequisite for becoming a curator is that after you fill out the uh, uh, registration form which will also ask you to, uh, to upload your CV, to provide some basic information about yourself, a few words about why you are motivated to be part of this, but also try to come up with those sample updates. So you should have a look at the JP with Digital Watch, what is the format of the updates that we are providing, and try to give us an example of, if you were the assistant curator, now what would be uh, the updates that you would, you would share with us. Uh, all information is available on Digital Watch website, uh, digitalwatch.giplatform.org slash about us. You would see more information, but just grab the leaflet and you would get it in a written format. Uh, the call for applications will close on the 3rd of January, if I'm not mistaken, but there is, there is some time uh, to think about whether you would like to go ahead. Uh, and after this, uh, we will select uh, those that we want to take to the second level of the application process who would have to go through an online training course on, on reporting. So uh, after you are done with the course, you would also be a certified uh, rapporteur, uh, which is another, another motivation. And after this second, uh, second step, we will make the final selection of the curators that we would like to involve uh, in our work. So the process is not automatic that if you apply, you will become a curator, but we hope to be able to motivate you along the way. We hope you to get out quite a lot of it also throughout the online course. Um, and, uh, and hope to have you on board then. If you have any further questions on this, please tell me, and I'm sure Constance wanted to add a few things as well. Go ahead. Sure. And I know we want you. Thank you very much, Teresa. I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, becoming an ISAC member, an individual member, is free. It takes a few minutes. You go on ISAC's website. Um, it is one of the requirements to be able to apply as a curator. 
uh, develop local content. Um, and it's very simple to do through our, through our web platform. And I think you mentioned the deadline, so. Uh, yes, but I will want to double check because I'm not sure if I remember well, but something like this. There is time, it's not tomorrow, it's not next week. Please uh, come forward to ask your question and introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, is this on? Yeah. Hi, good morning. My name is Lara Pace and um, I'm from the Global Cybersecurity Capacity Centre at the University of Oxford. Um, and I don't actually have a question, it's a comment. I think this is really, really good. Um, I'm a great fan of um, Diplo and I'm not a diplomat, but I sometimes log into your briefings because it's actually really, really helpful. We have a similar, um, well, we have a cybersecurity capacity building focused portal and I think Possibly it might be a good idea if we could have a conversation to see how we could feed in the cybersecurity element to this um, because I think there's definitely a lot of scope for collaboration um, and I wouldn't really worry about the competitiveness of portals. You know, the success of portals is really in the curation of that information. So I would focus on the curation of that information and then, you know, it will be the one kind of thing and everybody will feed into that. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you very much uh, for your for your nice comment uh, and uh, and encouragement. Yes, again, you know, we do not see this as a competition with the other initiatives. We we do the work that we believe will serve our community and really have constant conversations about the others. Uh, please let us talk more about the work that you're doing because it's not only with the observatory initiatives we want to cooperate, but definitely with with other partners with a special niche. Uh, uh, our director of the cybersecurity programs, Vladimir Radunovic, is around at the IGF as well, so it might be good to involve him in this uh, in this conversation as well. Thank you. And I believe we have questions from remote moderators, from remote uh, participants through our mo remote moderators. Sorry. Hello, um, we have a question uh, Miguel Ignacio from Argentina. Uh, what will the process for being a GIP Digital Watch moderator? Thank you very much for the question. I think Miguel is referring to the curator application process, uh, which I have uh, just described a few minutes ago together with Constance, so I'm not sure if there was a lack uh, in when this question uh, was asked. But once again, to become a curator for JP Digital Watch, uh, please uh, go online at giplatform.org uh, or digitalwatch.giplatform.org uh, and, uh, and you will have more information about the application process and the, and the prerequisites. Or Thank you. Thank you. Is this, uh, are there any other questions from remote? No, we haven't. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any further questions here in the room? Okay, uh, so uh, if not, uh, thank you. Thank you very much once again for coming. Uh, thank you for your questions and comments and for listening to us patiently. Thanks to Constance Bommeler from the Internet Society and Thomas Schneider uh, from, uh, from the Swiss Federal Office of Communications. I hope to see you also on Thursday at the GIP and Diplo Foundation uh, Open Forum, as well as on the session where we will talk together and discuss with the other observatories. I believe this is also taking place on Thursday afternoon, but please double check the schedule. Thank you and have a good day. And don't forget to grab your IGF daily tomorrow morning again. Thank you.